Introducing the all new Corolla. The uh, enhancement of the first degree felony for somebody who is confined simply makes no sense because you have to be removed to an unsafe place before you can be released in a safe place. The one thing that I kind of Im implicitly pointed out in my motion was that uh, as to the confinement charges in this particular case, the uh, the victims, reported victims, were left in no worse shape than they were prior to this quote-unquote confinement, and therefore it's another reason why it should not apply. And is that worth a first-degree felony? I, I suggest not. You know, what it was similar to, and I click on notes of decision, and it brings up a slew of cases regarding these. And your honor, for the defendant to point to, to key in one search term and go say there's 99 cases, that don't show this when there's when he's neglecting to see a whole slew of other places cases that are right on point. What the defendants are trying to do, Your Honor, in this case, is try and make some sort of obscure distinction between kidnapping by way of removal or kidnapping by way of confinement. Both Guam statutes and also the model penal code statute says that generally kidnapping whether by confinement or removal is first degree kidnapping, first, a first degree felony kidnapping. Um, now, Mr. Timlin talk, says that this first degree felony is an enhancement, but that's not the case here under the statute. It's not really an enhancement because that's the general penalty under the statute. It says that kidnapping is a felony of a first degree unless the defendant voluntarily releases the victim alive in a safe place prior to trial. Your Honor, that didn't happen here. The defendants did not release the victims in a safe place. The victims in this case were only released and put into a safe place upon the night of the raid.